All right, I've been continuing to work with this little uh, pulse motor, and uh, it's unusual to me because it's amperage motivated, not uh, not voltage motivated, and it, it'll run on about uh, 100 to 200 millivolts if you give it a a milliamp or better. And so I've tried all different kinds of things, and of course I wanted to go to my uh, homemade batteries and see what would work. And very few of them would work because they didn't have enough amperage. So I'm thinking, well, how do I go about that? I make a huge battery, or do I go for surface area? And you can see the size of that little battery right there. And this is magnesium and graphite fiber. And this motor's been running for 24 hours. Now, I had to do a few things to it during the 24 hours. I had to add a little water if it got dry. If it got too wet, I had to dry it out. And uh, this is what it is. It's this uh, magnesium ribbon, and we've all used that, the guys that have made these batteries. It deteriorates very rapidly. Uh, it's polyester shoelace material as the insulator between the magnesium and then this uh, carbon fiber. And there's your surface area right there. And then it's water and sea salt. And this is calcium chloride. This is stuff that uh, takes some moisture out of the air. And uh, you can get it at uh, Lowe's or, or hardware stores. And it's calcium chloride. And it'll actually uh, beat up water if you put it on a piece of paper. But that is rather interesting. I made several of these little cells and if you put a few of these little pieces of magnesium together and then uh, stick them inside this shoelace material and wrap it up with uh, carbon fiber and a piece of copper wire you end up with this cell that puts out enough amperage to run the motor and it was the amperage that was the problem and I tried a bunch of my uh, homemade batteries and it was uh, okay on voltage, but not enough amperage. Um, the differential between the, the magnesium and the graphite is about a volt and a half or so, a little bit better, depending on the electrolyte. But when you load it down on a tiny battery like that, it goes way on down to about uh, 500 millivolts or less with uh, about 3 or to 5 millivolts. Our milliamps. Let me turn the light off. I'll show you how the, the little LED is glowing. There's the LED. And this is what it sounds like. Let me turn the light back on here. And I am very, very convinced that there's something going on between that coil and that reed switch and the way these magnets are spaced. And there is something about the dynamic, the relationship between that coil, that reed switch, which sits in there like that, and the geometry of those magnets, those neodymium magnets, that causes this to do what it does. None of my other pulse motors will do this phenomena of running at the low, low voltage for long periods of time on a very small power source. It runs on the felt hay modules with just body heat. I can differentiate 98.6 versus a 75 degree room temperature and that motor will run on a felt hay, a couple of felt hay modules in series. And uh, this is, like I say, a little uh, magnesium and graphite fiber cell that uh, has been running this for 24 hours. Usually these little tiny um, cells don't do that. The electrolyte goes bad or the magnesium corrodes away or something happens and they, they just don't, they don't last very long. But that thing there with that low amount of uh, power draw works. Anyway, that's the latest my little uh, homemade pulse motor that runs on uh, low voltage with a little bit of amperage. Thanks for watching.